here's the setup I've got it ejecting into this can here so it doesn't catch these leaves on fire but uh, we're gonna fire this thing up and see if we can pump some hot gas okay we got a little bit of wood a little bit of charcoal kindling that's what I use for kindling by the way is charcoal from the previous burns I have this thing at 200 watts which is the wattage that we were typically running at I don't expect it to work that well at that wattage yeah, I'm not getting much of a vacuum at all here I might just be clogged yo that's clogged up tight See there? okay I'm at 300 watts actually which is way higher than normal but I got a feeling we're going to need that extra wattage to make up for the fact that we're running a ejector. <laughs> Nothing yet. <laughs> okay, I decided to go ahead and turn it up to about 500 watts because I got a bad feeling that it's going to take that much. I mean, we're, we're not running direct impeller anymore. Yeah, I don't know what to think not hearing that blower anymore. All you hear is gas noise. <laughs> Sounds like a natural gas line going off over here. We're up to 450. Got a little bit of moisture dripping out there. Well, there we go. Okay, this is a good site. We're burning the smoke. Still got some moisture coming through that thing. That worries me. I should have painted this thing. I went ahead and turned it up to about 600 watts. We want to be burning that smoke or else it'll clog the system up downstream here. We're coming up on the 600 degrees, slowly but surely. It's only been about 10 minutes. Now I could turn that blower all the way up and get way more than this, but I'm trying to be economical about this too. I don't want to just blast freaking 500 watts. I think we should just for a minute. Let's go ahead and turn this thing up full blast for a minute. See what the water even is because it's burning kind of lazy. I'm gonna turn it on full blast. That's 1300 watts. That's almost like a small electric heater, like the one I got on the floor here. So we are now pulling 1300 watts, which the only thing that bothers me about that is the fact that I'm burning up brush right now. That is a brushed universal motor. Okay, let's let it run for a second. Oh yeah, See, it definitely uh, pays attention. That's about how it would run at 200 watts straight connection. Let's go outside and see what that does. One of the fascinating things about this design is that it actually acts like a jet engine. As hot air enters this zone and heats this pipe up, the incoming air from the blower hits that hot pipe and it increases the volume of the air, giving us somewhat of a jet engine effect type boost. Um, I'm not sure how much or anything, but I do know that anytime you add hot air to a region with compressed air, the volumetric flow is increased. Not the mass per se, just the volume.
So we should have got higher velocities out of these little small areas right here. This is where our air blast is traveling and it causes it to make this cone. We end up with a cone here. Let me, basically the air shoots out of there like this. Making this cone and everything inside of this cone is under huge vacuum because let's say you got air molecules just spinning around here or bouncing, whatever they do. As soon as it hits this airstream, it gets swept away at like the speed of sound. So as these air molecules are bouncing around in here, they're just getting ripped away from this slipstream of high velocity air. That is how this thing works. So you got a molecule that's flying around, minding its own business. Usually everything's elastic and they're bouncing back and forth. But when you have this high flow, the molecule bounces into this slipstream and just gets ripped away. It doesn't come back. It's not an elastic collision. It's uh, just stripped away. This is how the uh, cooling effect takes place with the Venturi also. Air molecules will bounce off the walls of the chamber and they absorb an impact energy from the wall of the container they're in and then they're just swept away and they never return that energy back. So vibrational energy from the hardware, the steel, is being swept away by molecules that impact the steel, absorb some of that vibrational energy and then are just taken away and they don't collide back with the steel. That is how a Ventura makes cold air also. Pretty cool stuff. Alright, I'm going to shut up. Let's see if we got our 600 degrees. No, we don't. It's close. Really not that loud in here. So the goal has been accomplished. The main objective was to make a system that's quiet. Okay, this thing's a freaking roaring fireball now. I'm gonna turn it, I'm gonna turn it down. About 500 watts. It's starting to make heat expansion noises, like popping metal growing and stuff. So I'm gonna leave it running like this and just call it a day. Not too shabby. Oh, she is burning hot, guys. So hot it hurts my hand to be here. I eventually added those holes you see in an emergency. <laughs> it was buffeting really bad. But uh, the Ventura worked. Worked amazing. I'm very happy. And not only that, you guys loved the video. That freaking thing got like 250 views in like no time. That's just not normal for my videos. I mean, they usually drag out. It takes like two years to hit 100,000 views over here, man. So I am worried about the brushes on that motor. Now I have read in open literature that in power plants and things like that, that all of their brushed motor equipment can run six months for 24 hours a day, seven days a week before the brushes need to be changed. I don't know if that's true for all electric motors. I can tell you that uh, the first blower that I had was a brush motor and that thing lasted for like five years and the brushes were still this long. So uh, they started off like that long. They're huge. So if anyone has any information on armature brush life, um, leave some uh, information in the comments and, and any experience that you've had with, have you ever run a tool to the point the brushes failed? You know how they always send you the extra brushes in like a Sawzall kit or something like that? I have never seen that happen. Um, and I have run these blowers at low wattage though. I usually run them at like one to 200 watts. So that is not in, you know, indicative of its normal life by any means. But um, for the most part, 
I am a little worried that I'm gonna burn that motor up because I didn't take it apart and at least check it. That was a vacuum cleaner motor that was used for a residential um, vacuum system. We're currently at 545 watts. Virtually no smoke. We are burning all that smoke, which is a good thing. So there you have it, fellas. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate your views. Yesterday's project was a blazing success. The Ventura worked out just fine. We could have done a way better job. I just suck as a builder. I'm just in too big of a damn hurry, apparently. So there you have it, fellas. The Venturi Blower. <laughs>